Hey guys, today I am very excited about checking out this lens. This is the Camlan 50mm f1.1 lens that was sent out to me for review. So let's check it out. So here is the box that the lens comes in. As you can see, pretty simple packaging here, just an outline of a lens. I don't think that that is the lens that's inside because this outline is different. That's the same as the other side. Barely visible on the very front is the Camlan logo in yellow. All right, so you have Camlan logo and address contact info on a microfiber cloth. Some very nice packaging. Uh, this is just a hard foam. And the lens itself, uh, nothing else in the box. No materials, no warranty cards. This is it. So, wow. It's a little bit smaller than I expected it to be. I like this a lot, actually. So you take the caps off, wow. So take a look at that front lens element. Very, very large, very nice. I like the yellow ring around, very unique. Haven't seen that before. Focus ring is smooth. Yep, definitely very smooth, nice and grippy. The aperture ring on the bottom here is very stiff. Declicked aperture. Let's see if you can see the blades on the inside. There we are. So quite an impressive little lens. Uh, the mount looks different. Doesn't look like a standard E-mount, uh, so hopefully it fits. Well, let's go ahead and try this on the A6000. So here is the lens mounted on my A6000, and I have to say that it looks very, very nice. A tiny bit longer than the Sony 35 millimeter lens. Very solidly built. You can definitely tell that there is some weight there because there's a lot of glass here. Uh, but here's kind of a, a view of what it looks like. I do think that the mount design is a little strange. I'm not used to seeing the metal exposed mount around the outside of the front of the camera, but it is pretty solid. There's no wiggle. Uh, there's no, it's not like it's loose or anything like that. Like I said, the aperture ring is very, very stiff which I personally like because it's more difficult to accidentally bump it, but I know that some people may not like the fact that it's so stiff. Uh, the focus ring is very nice and smooth, as you can tell, and as far as turns, it goes a full 180 degrees from minimum to maximum focusing distance. That yellow ring really is unique, and that front glass element, every single time I look at it, I'm like, wow, that's actually really, really nice. So definitely a cool looking lens. Let's just hope that it performs. So let's go ahead and check out some sample photos and maybe a couple of videos with this lens. <laughs>
So that is it for the sample photos and videos. Overall, using this lens over the last couple of days has been really fun. I have enjoyed taking it with me to random places and taking some pictures here and there. It's pretty easy to use. I like how grippy the focus ring is. It's very smooth. It's pretty precise. Uh, there are moments where I wish it was a little bit more precise, but uh, it still does a decent job. It is really fast. For night photography, this thing gathers so much light more so than any other lens that I've tested. Those of you who have been watching my videos recently know that I just did a video about the curly 35 millimeter f1.2 lens that was much bigger, much heavier, more of a tank lens than this thing is. And how do I say this nicely? I like this lens a lot more, uh, which is surprising because the curly lens is $719, $720. This thing is 169 bucks, um, and it honestly is just more fun to shoot when it comes down to it. It's easier to take with you. It's not trying to be anything lavish. It's not trying to be the sharpest lens in your arsenal. It's just a cool lens with a super, super narrow focus plane that is just a lot of fun. The 50 millimeter focal length is not as usable as the 35, but for portraits, this is amazing. If you're shooting outside, this is amazing. Um, now, a lot of you will be asking, how sharp is it? Is it sharper than other fast 50 millimeter primes? Um, I haven't done a head-to-head -head comparison between any of my other 50 millimeter lenses, but I can tell you straight away that it's not gonna be sharper than the Sony 50 millimeter f1.8. If you are looking for a sharp 50 millimeter prime, just get the Sony. That is a very, very nice lens. In the center, it's not bad. It's not the sharpest lens that I've ever tested. When you stop it down, it gets better. F2, it gets really good in the center. In the corners, it's still a little soft. This is more a lens that's kind of creative. I would say it's almost strictly a portrait lens or a lens that you use strictly to photograph an object right in the middle of the frame because in the corners, it's just soft, unless you stop it down to like f16. This lens is really for someone that already has a solid collection of lenses and is just looking for something that's a little more unique, that's faster, that's manual, that you can throw around. You're not gonna be scared of accidentally nicking this lens because it's only $169. I think one of the reasons I like this lens so much is it reminds me of my first fast manual prime, which was this Pentax M 50 millimeter f1.4 that yes, I still have and I still use on occasion. Uh, this is really the lens that kind of started things off for me and using this Camlan 50 millimeter created a bit of nostalgia. I think it might be interesting to compare how these do against one another, but that's something for another video. I wish it was a little bit less expensive. Honestly, if this was like $120, I would say everyone should buy this lens. Uh, it's a bit on the slightly pricier side because at about $170, you're really getting into the territory of some really nice lenses with autofocus from Sigma in particular. Um, the native Sony 50 millimeter lens is about $250 to $300. So uh, it really depends on what you're looking for. But the one thing that this lens has going for it is it's f1.1. And it's just one of those unique characteristics that will definitely differentiate the photos that you take with this lens versus ones that you take with an f1.8. So that is it for my review of this lens. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. If you are interested in checking out more info about this lens or purchasing it, I will post a link down below to Amazon. As usual, thank you guys for all the likes and all the comments and all the support, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.